are in Spain for the launch of the 2017 V-Strom 1000. It's a bike that mostly, has mostly received update because of uh, Euro 4, so they had to make some uh, emissions changes for this year. There's a few other things that Suzuki have uh, tried to do to bring the bike a little bit more life and to kind of make it a bit more exciting. First up, they change the colour scheme, so there's the yellow colour schemes kind of in the style of their motocross bikes. Um, there's a few other new colours, they've got yellow wheels on this one as well, which kind of are meant to hawk after it. The factory motocross bikes are quite famous for having yellow wheels. Um, but really it's pretty unchanged from before. The biggest new addition, uh, I think, to the kind of the way it rides and uh, from an ownership point of view has to be the cornering ABS. It's something I really like, I'm a big fan of. I like the fact that you have that extra safety net that you probably didn't have before. Um, but apart from that, I don't think you're going to notice much of a difference. The seat's a little bit slimmer at the front, but otherwise it's the same bike as it was. And that's not a bad thing. Um, for the price range, I think you get a lot of bike with the V-Strom. It's a bike that kind of falls into the category of it's good, it's not great, um, but it's less than £10,000, so that's kind of all you can, I, I think, expect in that category. Um, when you look at the bikes that it goes up against, it, it's, a, it's probably one of the best in class, if not the best, on the road. Um, its biggest competitor, I think, in terms of price and performance is probably the Africa Twin. In terms of riding and handling performance, it's good. The brakes are good, they feel nice, they're not exceptional. The turning capability of it is nice, it's not exceptional. It's a little bit slow to turn in, maybe it feels a little bit sluggish, but it's very, very predictable. It's got a really linear turning curve. It feels it's just extremely comfortable most of the time. I'd kind of like it if it turned in a little bit quicker, if it had a bit more snap to the handling. I think it would make the bike feel a lot lighter than it does. But it's generally, it's a good bike. I have nothing to moan about with it when I ride it. It doesn't hamper you in any way. It's just that it's a good all-round bike. I think for this class of bike, and I get, especially against its competitors, the suspension, the base suspension is really, really good. It's fully adjustable front and rear, so you can do compression and rebound, preload on the shock, as well as compression and rebound. But the stock setting is really good. It's a little bit soft on compression and quite stiff on the rebound, but as a general setting for touring riding and road riding, it works really, really well. I think if you push harder than we were riding today and you wanted to kind of put some uh, put the hammer down then you might want to tweak that a little bit but for the riding we were doing the twisty roads and a little bit of straight road I never had a problem with it I was completely comfortable with the suspension setting all day I think the V-Strom has a really nice riding position especially for cruising the seat is kind of quite spacious where you sit um, it's got a nice cut but it's also quite flat so it lets you move around a lot and you never really feel particularly uncomfortable and likewise at the front of the seat it's quite narrow so it's not difficult to get your legs down, even though it's about 850 mil seat height, so about the same as a stock 1200 GS. Um, it feels like the seat's narrow and it works really well, I think, if you're a bit shorter. I'm not short, but I didn't really have a problem with it. Likewise, where it's narrow, it's quite easy to get forward on the seat. Um, that makes just kind of improving the handling of the bike a bit easier because it's easy to get your weight forward and, and to make it turn in. The engine's a little bit of a, a strange beast. It's not uh, a, a lot of the engines in the kind of adventure bike category have a lot of character to them. They either have a big punchy talky motor or they make crazy power at the top end or and, and the V-Strom's kind of the other way. It's super, super linear power all the way through. Has a lot of torque hit near the bottom at about kind of four to five thousand RPM. There's a lot of torque pull and that's really where I enjoyed riding it the most. When you rev it and kind of keep a, the yeah, keep the revs high and the gear low, even on the twisty roads. I'm not I'm not really that much of a fan. It's kind of linear and a little bit boring and you get lost in it a little bit, but when you run a gear high everywhere and let the bike roll and then just use that V-twin torque to pull out of a corner, it's really, really a lot more fun to ride. It kind of changes the character of the bike a little bit for me and takes it from being a bit bland to a little bit more exciting. It's still not exciting, but it is the most fun way to ride the bike. One of the other new additions for this year is that they've uh, added link brake system. So the fro when you pull the front, it activates the back a little bit as well. It seems to work really well. I uh, honestly didn't kind of intrude in any way that I didn't want it to. Um, in terms of off-road potential, Suzuki clearly kind of feel like this bike has uh, some off-road potential. We had a little bit of off-road in the test today. It wasn't much, it was probably only three or four kilometers, but it kind of gave you a really quick idea of what the bike feels like to ride. And off-road it feels like a bike that has potential but the current guys the current setup doesn't realize that potential so it 
If you're thinking of using this bike as a bike that you are going to do a more long distance trip on, somewhere where you will encounter a little bit of gravel and some off-road, through a few small changes, I think you can make this bike pretty comfortable on that terrain. It's already not uncomfortable when you ride it on the gravel, it doesn't feel like it's going to explode. It's not hard to make it go in a straight line or to go around corners. And we're on street tires pretty much, they're Adventure A40s, they're pretty much a street tire. It's got street handlebars on it and rubber foot pegs and if you change those three things and move the handlebars up and forwards a little bit and put some bigger flatter foot pegs on and a dual sport tire kind of a TKC80 or a Carew 3 or an Anarchy Wild one of those kind of tires I think you'd transform the off-road ability to kind of 80% of its maximum potential if Suzuki did a little bit of development I think they could make something that was really really good out of this bike as well with a few other changes a, a few little geometry tweaks but as a, a core bike, it has potential to be a bike that is comfortable uh, on some gravel roads. I think one of the biggest letdowns on the off-road actually was the suspension, where it's set up to be super comfortable for touring and it's kind of really stiff on the rebound that makes it uncomfortable on the off-road because you have lots of little bumps all the time. It packs down and it doesn't bounce off things the way you want to. Um, and it, if you change that a little bit, even just with the clickers, if you wound the rebound out a few clicks and and so on, if you had a little bit more time to play with it, I think you could get it to the point where that works really well. All in, the V-Strom's a bit of a strange bike because normally I have more to say about how much I like or dislike about it. And for the most part, everything on this bike is, is just good. I don't have anything to kind of moan about or to effervesce about and write loads of words. It does what it sets out to do. It works well on the road, it's comfortable, it's functional. There's nothing that you look at and go, why have they done that? That's stupid. And likewise, there's nothing on it where I, I, I'm like, wow, that's the best feature ever. Every bike should have one of those. It just does a good job. The V-Strom kind of is that bike where there's nothing that really needs fixing, but at the same time, it doesn't blow me away anywhere. And I, I think it would be nice if maybe Suzuki added that into the package at some point in the future.